In this video, we will implement support for Internet Protocol version 6. First, let's go through our library's CPP files and see what we need to modify or add. The first thing we're going to look at is our IP endpoint class when we are resolving an IP. What we currently have is code for handling the IPv4 uh, address. So we're just going to copy this and we are going to do the same thing but for IPv6. Instead of using an adder, we will use n6 adder. We'll call that adder6. When we do a presentation to network conversion, instead of AFINet, it'll be AFINet6. And instead of passing in the address of adder, we'll pass in the address of adder6. If result is 1, that means that the conversion was successful. I'm going to take out that if statement we had. Uh, I think that might actually not even be necessary, but I'll just leave it up top for now. Same idea, we'll set the IP string and host name to be equal to the IP passed in. When we resize the IP bytes, we need to resize it to 16 bytes. For the Internet Protocol version 4 address, we had size of view long because it was 4 bytes. However, the Internet Protocol version 6 address requires 16 bytes. Now when we copy this, we're going to copy from our adder6 struct, and we're going to start copying at our union. Now the adder6 struct, is, the naming's a little bit different, but it's the same idea. There's a union that has either the 16 bytes or it has 8 uh, two-byte words. But we're just going to reference that union because regardless, we're just interested in that data. And for the number of bytes to copy, we can put 16 here because it's 16 bytes. Lastly, for the IP version, we will set it to IPv6. Now, if we get down here, that means that it was a host name. So we have to resolve that host name and get its IPv6 address. So what we'll do is I'm just going to put v6 after these variables. And instead of AFINet, we'll use AFINet6. When we call get adder info, we'll pass in our new variables right here. Down here, uh, we will reference host info v6. And instead of resizing to 16 characters for our IP string, we need to resize to 46 for Internet Protocol version 6. The last argument of our network to presentation conversion is the buffer size, which is 46 bytes for our 46 character string. We'll use AFINet 6 since it's Internet Protocol version 6. Also, instead of using a sock adder in, we are going to use a sock adder in 6 since this is an Internet Protocol version 6 address. And then we will access the address with uh, SIN6 adder. Now, if we scroll down, let's see what else we have. Uh, before, we were storing the 4-byte IP address in a ulong. That's not necessary. All that we're going to do is we're going to resize our byte array to 16 bytes. And then we just need to copy the bytes uh, into our array. So we know we're copying 16 bytes. So we'll go ahead and fill that in. And we're copying it from this sign adder field. Next, we are assigning Internet Protocol version 6. Now, if we scroll down, let's take a look at our uh, IP endpoint constructor that takes in a sock adder pointer. Before, we were asserting that it was an Internet Protocol version 4 address. But instead, we are going to assert that it is either Internet Protocol version 4 or Internet Protocol version 6. If it is Internet Protocol version 4, then we are going to do the same thing that we were doing before. Else, for version 6, let's paste our code and make the necessary changes for version 6. So we'll use a sock adder in 6. We will assign IPv6 for the IP version. We will uh, access SIN6 port instead of SIN port. When we resize the bytes, we will have to resize to 16 bytes to hold our Internet Protocol version 6 address. When we copy the data, we are going to copy from the sign 6 header 
And then for the number of bytes, it's going to be 16 bytes. When we resize our IP string, it will have to be 46 characters long. And when we call network to presentation conversion, it will have to be 46. Lastly, we just need to change it to AFINet6 and update our variables. And it's pretty much the same flow, just with new variables and new lengths. Now there's still one more thing we need to add to our IP endpoint class, but we first have to go to the header to create the declaration. We have a way to get an internet protocol version 4 sock adder, but we need a way to get the version 6 uh, sock adder. So we're going to create the declaration, generate the definition, go into this, and we'll just copy what we had for the version 4, and we'll change this to assert that the IP version is version 6. We're going to use a sock adder n6. We'll use sign 6 family afi net 6. Instead of copying it to the sin adder, we're going to copy to the sin 6 adder. And the number of bytes is going to be 16 bytes that we're copying. And then sin 6 port. So it's a very similar layout, just with some very small differences. Now let's take a look at our socket CPP. Scroll to the top. Before we were asserting that the IP version was version 4. However, now we will also include version 6. Regarding our socket create function, the only thing we'll have to change is when we call the socket function. If it is version 6, we will use AFINet 6, and if it's version 4, we'll just use AFINet. To make this easier, we will just use a conditional operator here. We will say if it's Internet Protocol version 4, use AFINet, otherwise use AFINet 6. The other arguments are the same, so we can just leave those. Next, let's look at our bind function. Before, we were just assuming that the endpoint was an Internet Protocol version 4 address. What we're going to do is we're going to assert that the IP versions match. Then we're just going to set up an if else here. So if it is Internet Protocol version 4 like before, we will have the same logic. Otherwise, for version 6, and just copying and pasting what we had, we will just modify this to use the new uh, names for everything. Next, for our listen function, we'll actually have to add something specifically for Internet Protocol version 6 servers if they want to be able to accept Internet Protocol version 4 connections. And the way we can do this is with set socket option. So first we have to add a new socket option to our socket option header. And the way this will work is if this value is true, then only Internet Protocol version 6 can connect. Otherwise, if it's false, then both can connect. By default, I believe it's true, so we'll have to override this to be false when we try to listen on an Internet Protocol version 6 server. So what we will do is we will first check the version. What we're saying is, if we call set socket option on this and try to set it to false, if this is a failure, then we'll return our generic error. Now we need to set up set socket option to support this new IPv6 only. If we go down to that, set socket option, we're just going to add a new case here. For some reason, the set sock opt documentation does not include the IPv6 socket options. So you have to go to another page to see them, but on here you can see the IPv6 only socket option, which explains how I got these values right here. Next, let's take a look at how we are accepting connections. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put in our assert to make sure that either Internet Protocol version 4 or version 6 is selected, and then build our logic around that. So if it's Internet Protocol version 4, we will just copy in the logic we had for that. Otherwise, if it's version 6, we'll copy the logic and make the necessary changes. 
So we'll use a sock adder in six for version six. And when we go down here, uh, when we create our new socket, we're going to make sure this is set to be an internet protocol version six socket. Now let's look at our connect function. For our connect function, we're going to assert that the IP version matches between the endpoint and this socket. So of course, for internet protocol version four, we will have the same logic as before. So we're just going to declare a result variable up here. And then for version six, it's very similar except we are going to call get uh, sock adder IPv6 and we're going to pass in the size of our sock adder N6 struct. Now that was a lot of little changes, but let's see how this works now. So we'll go into the server and before, if we look at where we were listening, we were essentially letting anybody connect. Now, if we want to only let this computer connect, you know, we had said we could use the local host. And if we wanted any computers on our router to connect, we could use the local IP for this computer. Now, if you want to have the uh, wildcard address in Internet Protocol version 6, that looks like this. This is saying anybody can connect. And this could also be written like this. So pretty much all the bytes are just zeros. It's the same idea as just a wild card. If you just wanted the local host, you could do this. And this is saying only uh, the local host can connect. So for this test, we're just going to use this. And one thing to remember is our sockets by default are internet protocol version four. So we have to make sure that we actually pass in version six into our constructor. If we try to listen to an internet protocol version 6 address and our socket is for version 4, we will get an error. Let's go ahead and give this a test. So we are going to run the server. Oh, it failed to compile. Let's see what I did wrong here. Uh, looks like I redefined result. So we'll fix that. And now let's try to run the server. And then we run the client. All right, and we fail to connect. All right, I had to do a little bit of debugging, but I found that when you're listening with an internet protocol version six address and you use local host, that it seems like you're, you can't connect with a local host internet protocol version four address. So I'm just going to listen for all possible connections and that will allow me to connect using the internet protocol version four address. So let's run this server and now let's run this client and you'll see the client was able to connect to the server. Now we'll close the client. And one thing to, that is kind of interesting is in the server, it connects it as like an IPv6 address. You see there's 16 bytes, but it's like the first 10 bytes are all zeros the next two bytes are both FF, you know, they're 255. And then the last four bytes will be the actual IPv4 address. Let's take a look at what it would look like uh, if an IPv6 connection was established. So on the client, we'll change it to use IPv6 and we will tell it to connect to local host. Keep in mind that if our server is only listening on local host, the client will be able to connect this way. So we'll go to debug, start new instance, and then we will go ahead and start up the client. And you'll see here, go ahead and close out the client. We scroll to the top, we see our connection was made and it's just all zeros and then a one at the end for localhost. That concludes our video on how to support internet protocol version six. This is going to be the last real tutorial for this specific series regarding blocking sockets in the Winsock API. In the next video, we are going to review why you would never want to use blocking sockets, and then we will conclude this series.